Hello and welcome to Miniature Realms. It's time for another painting tutorial and today's subject of some French Napoleonic artillery from Warlord Games' Epic Battles Waterloo range. And the miniature has been prepared using a Zenithal pre-highlight. I'll pop a little link in there now of a video that explains that. But essentially it gives me a base to work from. It's not just pure white, it gives me a little bit of shadow as well. And then I will build up um, the paint layers on the model using contrast and army painters um, speed paints. This will give me some natural highlight and shadow, and then it'll give us a natural jump off point for people who don't want to move any further there. And then I will show in the rest of the video how you can highlight on top of those and make them even smarter. It is still a tabletop finish. So first up is a Citadel color contrast paint and it's Fire Slayer Flesh. I've been using the Fire Slayer Flesh a little bit more recently, I think on early painting tutorials for the Epic Battles range. I was using the Gilliman Flesh, both fantastic. I've just sort of moved over to this in more recently. It's got a slightly richer tone and gives more of a natural shadow. Next up, we have Contrast Militarum Green. Now, this is going to form the base colour for the wheels and the sort of limber area of the cannon itself. So I'm being careful to try and keep the paint in only the areas that I wish. Um, the, the Zenithal pre-highlight gives you a really nice base to work from, but if you do get an area that you, that you didn't want to get the colour on, you can always just add a little bit of white or grey paint to paint back over and get that full benefit from this process. So next up, I'm going to use some Skeleton Horde on one of the Shaco covers. They seem to have a bit of a mix of colours, mostly a kind of a greyish black, um, but there is plenty of artwork that shows those with a slightly lighter colour. I know it might be disputed by some people, but I quite like it and it um, gives some variation within the, the miniatures when you've got mass ranks together. And then for the grey version, I'm using Basilicanium Grey. Next up onto one of the main colours, it's speed paint this time and it's cloudburst blue and this will form the basis of all the blue in their uniforms which is for French quite a, quite a large area. Now this is quite a rich blue, um, I'm trying to be very careful here to keep it off the areas that will be white um, but I do want it to be fairly thick in the recesses as well so I take my time and build up and, and cover as much of the miniature as I can with a nice even coat where the blue is required. Now for the white areas, I'm going to use some contrast apothecary white. This is essentially a grey wash, um, so it does a really nice job of, of adding a bit of filter where the white's quite bright and just adding a little bit in the recess if there isn't any natural from the pre-highlight. And when you highlight it later on added by adding natural white, it really just kind of makes it pop. So for the red areas, I'm going to be using Contrast Blood Angels Red. There's a few of them on the model, so mainly facings, got a cuffs and epaulets and things like that. We're now onto the hair, and I like to use three colours. So Wildwood, Nasdrag Yellow, and Gore Grunt of Fur. I tend to sit with all three pots open and just randomise amongst the unit I'm doing, or in this case, a stand of artillery. And here I am using Gore Grunt of Fur again, just for a few wooden areas like the handle on the cannon sponge. Now for some black areas, I'm using Contrast Black Templar. So we're talking about the boots, um, the uncovered shako, and some other areas like the, the scabbards and, and, and things like that. Now 
Now I'm going to be using some Necro Gold from Scale Color, that's Scale 75, and I find it a really nice base for the cannon itself. Now, obviously they will be brass, but uh, a gold is on sort of the brass color spectrum, and this is a really desaturated gold, quite earthy, and I think it just looks really good and quite natural once it's, it's on the miniature and shaded and highlighted. Now using scale color black metal and this is for all the sort of the standard metallic bits so there's areas on the cannon there will be um, sword hilts and things like that just little bits of trim around the edges and of course the the edges of the the, the metal wheels are just kind of brush a few lines on just to give the idea of some worn metal Now some Agrax Earth Shade to wash over the barrel. Now at this stage, you could leave the miniature, base it and away you go and it'll be perfectly usable tabletop ready. Maybe you want to pick out the white a little bit more just to make it pop. But these are fairly flat colours, but you've got a little bit of natural highlighting shade from the contrast pre-highlighting method. However, we're going to carry on. So we're going to start by highlighting the jacket first off with dark Prussian blue from model colour. Then a further highlight with royal blue also from model color. And what you're trying to do with this highlight layer is just to leave the two first coats still visible to a certain degree. So that being that the cloudburst blue from Army Painter Speed Paint and the Prussian blue underneath. So you've got a bit of a tri color in there and it just makes the model look more three dimensional. Now to highlight the red with Evil Sun Scarlet from Citadel. Now back to the Necro Gold from Scale Color, just to paint the side straps of the hats on the Shackos, and also just to add a little bit of highlight back to the barrel of the cannon which we washed over with Agrax Earthshade. Now using Noctura Fairy Flesh which is a Vallejo colour just to pick out some highlights on the flesh areas. Now you don't always need to do this I just feel they look a little bit dark with just the contrast and this just helps make them pop and if it looks a little bit too bright I find a very thin down glaze of either Fire Slayer Flesh or Ginnaman Flesh afterwards just to place back over it again just tones it all down a little. And here you can see me doing just that with the contrast Ginnaman Flesh and I've watered this down 50-50. I'm just applying a little bit just to some of the areas I think a little bit brighter than they should be. Now some scale colour graphite grey just to gently highlight the top of the grey Shaco covers. Model Colour Dark Sand to do the same with the Tan Coloured Chaco Cover. Now using Model Colour Off-White is down to the all-important highlighting of the white and I think that this is probably the most important part for making the miniatures really, really pop. So while if you've been careful you'll have what looks like white areas from your pre-highlight 
um, this just really really makes a difference now what you what you don't want to do is completely cover all those areas you really want to highlight and leaving some of that gray shadow there you'll have that from the contrast possibly white as well but just going in and picking out some of the top areas especially the cross straps and things like that little spots on the the trousers and things and it just really really starts to come together and really really stands out Some game air silver, just find this as a really lovely bright silver for highlighting any of the metal areas that we've added the, the darker scale colour black metal to. Some scale colour graphite grey to highlight the black areas where needed as well, just the tops of ammunition pouches and the top of the shako. Now you may find you don't need to do this, the contrast um, black is very, very good for, for leaving a bit of a natural highlight there anyway, but there might be some areas that it's just gone over quite thick in the coverage and you might want to just to really reinforce that, but again, very much an optional thing. Now the wooden areas of the, the, the cannon, so the, the wheels and things, were looking a little bit dull to me, so I've used some middle stone from scale colour just to uh, to give it a nice little highlight um, very very gently there just picking out and just getting those areas um, again you don't need to do this if you're adding sort of dust and dirt and effects and things to the wheels like I do anyway and um, they don't always show up but this did did make a little bit of a difference so there we are at the end um, all based and ready, tufts added. Now this is a, a client's miniature, so it's very slightly different to the basing I do on my own army, just in the colour of the tufts, more of a sort of a neutral colour green. Um, I think it looks absolutely fantastic for a tabletop. Um, there's areas that are all messy, of course, but you have to remember the scale of these miniatures and you've got an awful lot of them to paint if you're doing armies. There are a number of drop-off points. Um, you could you could stop before any of the highlighting, like I mentioned earlier in the video. Um, you can add highlights just to the most prominent areas. So your your blue, your red, and white. Really, there's lots of things you can do to keep to, to speed it up and make it simple if you wanted to. Um, you'll see here from these clearer pictures um, what it looks like under a, a better light. Really, so I've added some mud effects to the wheels and things like that. It just really, really kind of makes the miniature stand out. And you'll see how the white highlights over the grey really, really pop. And when you haven't got my bright painting lamp. Um, bleaching it all out thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel and check out the other videos on the channel as well there are plenty of other painting tutorials including many many for epic battles as well as lots of reviews and um, general chitter chatter with my vlogs about the game my name's Stuart. I'd love to hear from you. So please comment on the video and feel free to get in touch via social media. All the links and things are in the video description. You can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter. Um, and I'd love to kind of hear how you're getting on painting your own armies and things as well and any tips and tricks. So if you don't, if you're not a commenter on videos, please do get in touch that way. I'd love to, love to see people engage with the videos and, uh, and chat to them about painting and hobby in general. Anyway, it's bye from me now. Take care and I'll catch you soon.